Hello again, sick, tissed weather freaks, and welcome to a special edition of This Week in Weather. I'm your host, meteorologist DT from weatherist.com, your commander of chaos, colonel of confusion, captain of catastrophe, and all around winter weather lover. So let's talk about uh, what's going on here. <coughs> oh, obviously, we're going to have two events we want to talk about in more detail. I was not going to do another video originally for this, but. Um, there's so much information out there and it's so kind of complicated i thought instead of doing numerous facebook posts i would just do a video so there you go so well let's get right to it so first we'll start there's a picture of my smiling face from richmond virginia and you can see uh there i am at my two emails and my twitter page and facebook page there you go all right there are obviously the topics same as we did two days ago with the last update the january 25 26 event and 28 29 and then I'm not really going to spend much time looking at February on this particular update. All right. Now, this is what the data was showing a couple of days ago. So this is the um, <clears throat> the uh, Tuesday um, uh, Euro uh, European model from early Tuesday morning. And it had, as you can see, significant snow in uh, the central and northern half of uh, uh, Virginia and Maryland and um, Delaware, southern Pennsylvania, a good portion of Ohio. And then a pretty nice layer of ice in between. And we had two low pressure areas, one over eastern Kentucky, southeast Kentucky, another one in North Carolina. And it looked like the primary low was going to weaken in Kentucky and the secondary low was going to take over in North Carolina and keep it a snow event. And as a result, we saw something like this. That's what the model was showing with regard to the snowfall in the central and northern half of Virginia. And notice pretty good snow there in eastern portions of West Virginia, Maryland, Delaware, so on and so forth. Uh, the GFS didn't have anything. It had a pretty weak system and then going to a little bit of snow at the end. Very flat looking system. Not much amplification there. Uh, not nearly as much as precipitation as on the European. Well, the difference here was... It began to change here. Now, this was the upper area map. I showed this a couple of days ago. I did show this map on, uh, two days ago when I did the last update. Now, the key here is that the upper low, which initially was forecast to be here in Kansas, Oklahoma, and Arkansas, is now there. You see the closed upper low right there? And as a result, that's significantly further north. So if the low is, surface low is here, the upper low is now going to be here. And as a result, the whole system shifted, shifts to the north. And we began to see this, again, this was uh, the uh, January 20th, the midday European model. Now notice where the low was. And again, I showed this last time, but I want to remind you of where things, how this is evolving. See the low in Illinois and Indiana, how it moves into Ohio. Also notice that the secondary low in, off the coast is much, much weaker. Now, what that means is that produces significant snow into Chicago and Wisconsin and Michigan and New York State and central and northern Pennsylvania and into New York City and New England. But the snow threat for most of Virginia is gone. Now, there is an ice threat, <clears throat> according to this data from a couple of days ago, in uh, Maryland and this western Maryland and the eastern portions of West Virginia and in northwest Shenandoah Valley. So that's what the data was showing. So here's the new data. So now we're moving into the new time frame. Now, this is the midday data uh, for uh, today on the GFS. And we can see here where the upper low is. The upper low is now um, here in Missouri. So it's still pretty far to the north. And then it's going to continue to track in this direction. So the problem is that this trough here in the western United States is so massive, this system here. I mean, if you know anybody in the west coast, they're going to get slammed here this weekend, early next week. This is a monster storm coming in. But because it's so big, when this uh, comes down like this, a trough, you get a ridge here. See that ridge there? And as a result, the upper low has to go over the top of the ridge and it tracks further to the north. And sure enough, there we go. The, up, the energy is now much weaker. You can see it is falling apart because this system is already coming eastward. But what, there is enough energy here to keep this system intact. And it goes up through Ohio and Pennsylvania and it weakens and it falls apart. And we'll see that in a second. But it stays well to the north. And that's, that's the shift to the north. So here we go. This is now uh, for, <clears throat> this is a Monday morning. Now, we have rain in North Carolina, southwest Virginia. Temperatures are too warm for anything but rain. It's a chilly rain, but rain. And then all this rain back in here. You can see back in Kentucky, Illinois, southern Indiana, that sort of thing. And then now the next image is going to take us into uh, 
uh, this is Monday night, and we now have a raging ice storm, a freezing rain ice storm, in the northern half of the Shenandoah Valley. As you can see, that red is ice, freezing rain. Uh, the purple is sleet, and the blue is snow. So uh, we do have some sleet in Winchester and Martinsburg and the eastern Panhandle of Virginia. Notice most of Pennsylvania at this point is snow, but so is Frederick and Hagerstown and maybe Westminster and Towson. There's still snow, but they won't be for long. Now look where the surface low is. The primary low is almost gone completely. There's almost nothing here at all. So that's gone. And the primary low, look what it is in, south, uh, in Indiana. Uh, monster snow, well, not monster, but major snow here in, oh, in Chicago. You can see that going into southern uh, Michigan and northern Indiana. And this low is going to track in this direction. It's going to weaken, but it's going to stay well to the north. But meanwhile, the cold air is entrenched. Uh, this is uh, valid 1 a.m. on Tuesday. And uh, the, rain, the freezing rain is now pushed to the north, but it's still falling in much of Maryland, north and west of D.C., up to the Pennsylvania Maryland border and then eastern portions of the West Virginia Panhandle and far northwest Virginia moderate snow in in, in northern uh, say southeast Michigan uh, much of Pennsylvania and then if you go on finally you can see it pushes up the snow spreading into New York City New Jersey Connecticut that sort of thing then the icy vent is over by Tuesday morning for Virginia and Maryland and northwest Virginia Maryland or eastern West Virginia Panhandle now that's the snow which is a decent snow amount you can see it's pretty big snow here on the GFS I think this is overdone I do not see out of this kind of event 20 inches of snow in central Pennsylvania I think that's crap I mean that's just but you know you could see 10 inches out in there yeah Ohio to 8 to 10 inches yeah very reasonable Sure, I, I can see that. I just think this is overdone. The main threat here is the ice. Look at the ice here. I mean, holy cow! 0.57 in Charlottesville, 0.6 in Staunton, 0.4 in Winchester. I mean, this is right. The Shenandoah Valley is going to have an ice storm and a pretty bad one. And then even to the north and west of D.C. and Baltimore, you got significant ice. The Martinsburg, Winchester, Frederick, uh, 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 you know, uh, the Cumberland Gap out there in western Maryland. Uh, Frostburg, that's pretty big ice. Even into Gettysburg and Altoona, place like that, a pretty big ice event if this is right. And one of the concerns I have is look at these temperatures Sunday morning. It's pretty cold. Now, we've had some ice events before in the Shenandoah Valley. If you're a fan in the Shenandoah Valley, Northern Virginia, West Virginia, Central Maryland, we've had some ice before, but the temperatures going into those events were not nearly as cold during the morning hours. This is Sunday morning. We have temperatures down to 25 in Roanoke. So the, the point here is that the ground temperatures are going to be really cold going into this event, not like the last several events. There's a big difference between having, you know, if you're 30 degrees and you're getting freezing rain, but the last several days you've been 55 or 50 degrees with sunshine, your ground temperatures are not that cold. But if you're getting down into the 20s the day before, low to mid-20s, you know, Saturday morning, Sunday morning, it's a, that's a difference. That ground temperature is going to be a lot colder. That's what I'm telling you here, folks. Now, these are the temperatures for what, for 7 o'clock on Monday when the rain's coming down. But as you can see, the Shenandoah Valley, it's, it's all that's all freezing rain and sleet. You can clearly see that. So uh, that's the problem. Now, again, <clears throat> for most of Virginia, areas to the south and east of D.C., southern Maryland, the Delmarva, all of central Virginia, Richmond, Hampton Roads, Roanoke, Lynchburg, the southern half of the Shenandoah Valley, this is all rain. I've been saying that for days. This is nothing but rain, so that hasn't changed. My main concern is the ice threat in the northern half of the Shenandoah Valley, some ice into D.C. Or free, or, and Baltimore, and then significant ice into central and western Maryland and the eastern portions of the West Virginia Panhandle. We briefly review. So in other words, um, you can see here a moderate snow event um, for uh, Indiana, Ohio, southeast Michigan, Pennsylvania, New York, New Jersey, New York City, Connecticut. Um, again, best snow looks like central Pennsylvania and northern Ohio. But that's, you know, they could see several inches into Jersey, New York City. It's, you know, definitely possible a three to six inch snow in those areas. All right. Rain for most of Virginia, North Carolina, Delmarva. All right. So that's I'm sorry. I've been saying that. I'm not sure why people are concerned that there might be snow in, in central Virginia. That's not going to happen. This is primarily rain. The main concern is the ice threat in, in the north half of the Shenandoah Valley, the eastern West Virginia panhandle. All right. And um, 
in this whole area here and then into western central maryland monday late after monday night into tuesday dawn tuesday now the whole thing's over by tuesday morning for maryland and virginia don't get me wrong it's but it continues in pennsylvania there is some ice going to rain concerns for baltimore and dc metro areas okay let's talk about the second event now which is january 28 29 now this is what the gfs was showing a couple of days ago uh, this is January 20th. We had the early morning GFS was showing the low off the coast and then a big low much closer to the coast with a significant snowstorm in North Carolina and implying a snowstorm for Virginia. And the European model showing that as well. The European was just going bonkers with this two days ago on Wednesday morning. This is the Wednesday afternoon run of the European giving a major snowstorm. Ohio and Pennsylvania and West Virginia and Maryland and Delaware into New Jersey, maybe New York City. This was a pretty big event. Uh, <clears throat> so the concern here is, or the main issue driving this, is the first system. This first system, let me get the upper area map here. We have a huge block. You see the red area in the upper right of this map? That's the big Greenland block. So it forces the energy to stay to the south. Now, in this case, we don't have new energy coming into the west coast. So what happens is that the main piece of energy here, there it is on uh, Wednesday evening, goes to the drop southeastward, down towards... Uh, Norfolk Hatteras. So the energy goes southeast. Look how, and also the other difference is look how stronger the red is here. Look how stronger the red becomes. So that forces this whole system to drop to the southeast like that. See that? There you go. Now, if this is correct, you, if this is right, you can see the uh, inflection point there in the height lines. You would not see any snow north of New York City if this is correct because the system is dropping southeast like that. Now, maybe the model data is going to change, but that's what it's showing right now. So um, to show you the difference and why, how important this is, uh, this is the upper air map for Monday. Now, you see where the low is. You can see the rain spreading into Virginia. So this is an enlargement of uh, this map. It's the same map, okay? Just a different shot. You understand that, right? Good. So look where the high is. The Arctic high I mean, is here in north central Manitoba. All right? You have a little bit of a high here, not much. Okay, now it is driving southeastward. It is doing that. But in the meantime, your warm front's like this. So as the slow tracks to Ohio, it lifts the warm front northward. Okay, because the high is too far to the north. Got that, right? Now look at the difference here. This is uh, for uh, valid for um, Wednesday, Tuesday night, Wednesday morning. Look where the high is. It's now North Lake Superior. Classic snowstorm position from Mid Atlantic. And if we go further, as the storm begins to develop, this is the 12 GFS. The European, the Canadian has the same thing. Look where the high is. James Bay, Canada, 1045 millibars, monster high, very nicely positioned. Cold air damming coming down from New England into the Virginia and North Carolina. And you've got a snowstorm and a winter storm here. So the position of the high is a big deal. It comes much further east, pushes the cold air in. And that's why the second event is snow. It either misses or it's snow. For Virginia and Maryland, West Virginia, Delaware, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, this is not snow to ice. It's either snow or it's nothing because it'll pass too far to the south and east. Okay? All right, good. Let's take a look how this happens. This is the 12 ZGFS. Excuse me. This is the 6 ZGFS from Friday morning. There's the low, the big snow in Virginia, uh, spreading into North Carolina and southeastern Virginia and the Delmarva. Nothing north of D.C. on this particular run of the GFS. That doesn't mean it's right. It's just what this run is showing, just this run. And then this is the uh, 12Z GFS. As you can see, the primary low, very weak in Kentucky, 10, 11 millibars. There's the monster low here off the coast. You can see it here. So this is the primary there. The secondary low forms here, and there it is bombing out on um Wednesday on Thursday evening afternoon you can see that now Hampton Roads you can see is all rain and all in here and you got heavy snow in Richmond a mix a little bit of sleet and then monster the big snow getting up into moderate snow into DC and then most of Virginia is getting pounded with significant snow you can see that all of West Virginia as well Southwest Virginia that's the 12 Z GFS that's what it's showing that's not a forecast that's what it's showing all right and then it moves off the coast here 
Now when it moves off the coast, now the snow moves back into Hampton Roads and northeast North Carolina as the low bombs out. 990 millibars, this thing is going to town. The winds are really picking up. 30, 40 mile an hour winds on this thing, if it's correct. We don't know if it's correct, but if it is, that's what it's showing. And you've got a major snowstorm in central and eastern Virginia into the Delmarva and north interior, north central North Carolina. That's big snow in Raleigh and Emporia and uh, Mount Wilson and uh, Richmond and Petersburg and uh, Williamsburg and Sony Creek and Emporia, so on and so forth. Um, and, and the model is showing this. That's not a forecast. That's what it's showing. All right? That's a big snow for everybody, except for Hampton Roads. They get ripped off on the snow there. So according to the data, not a forecast, not yet. And the European, this is the Canadian, excuse me. The Canadian is showing also a pretty big snowstorm for everybody. Just into D.C. and then up in southern New Jersey, but a really big snow from Salisbury to Richmond. You can see that. That's just one possible solution, not a forecast. The European, this afternoon's European is weaker, as you can see that. Um, it's got uh, the low much weaker, uh, only a moderate snowfall, and the European ensemble is showing, you know, cut just a couple of inches. So um, uh, I, that's a big shift from the European, so we'll see what the new one shows. So in summary, for the January 28, 29 event, it looks like a mid-Atlantic snowstorm based on what I'm seeing. The cold high likely is going to be ideal with relationship to the cold air getting into the mid-Atlantic for a significant East Coast snowstorm. So again, the, this event for Thursday is set up by the one on Monday, Tuesday. That low moves up into southeastern Canada, reinforces the blocking, and makes the atmosphere much colder, and it forces this next piece of energy coming out of the west coast to track much further to the south, and that produces the snowstorm. So there are still viable solutions here, a lot of possibilities. Um, it looks pretty good, and the upper air pattern looks pretty good, and that's always a good sign. You know, the big events you can always see coming several days out, and this one looks pretty big, at least so far. So anyway, there's the update. Hopefully, I uh, answered your questions. I'll probably do another one on Sunday, I think. And uh, this is Meteorologist DT from Weather Risk. I'll see you on the Facebook page and on the Twitter page.